Welcome back to Speed Demon Painting, where today we are taking uh, a closer look at painting the rider in the part 2 video of the Iron Horses in the Lawman theme. Now, for this miniature we'll be starting over a zenithal primer layer, where we primed the model black first and then applied uh, a light grey at a 45 degree-ish angle from the top to create some, uh, some shadows and uh, some volumes on our model. This is perfect for the contrast paints because then you get some more interesting shading, uh, not just recess shading, like the contrast paints are known to do. And the first color, the first contrast color I'll be applying is Leviathan Blue uh, all over the denim trousers uh, until that is done. The next contrast paint to be applied over this is uh, Snakebite Leather. It, the model has quite a few leather parts and I start by applying everything on the, uh, the legs essentially. I go around picking out all of the different leather parts with this color. Uh, it's best to, apply, or to paint up half of the model first, uh, make sure that it is nicely varnished because contrast paints are quite brittle and if you don't give them a, primer, uh, a good varnish layer you will actually uh, damage it as you go along. So the idea is to paint the bottom half of the model first until it is ready for some varnish layers so you can you know, hold it without having to be afraid of damaging the rest of the paint job. Before I can apply any of the varnish though I have to pick out all of the details and I'll be using Games Workshop Lead Belcher for this. Get a fine tip brush and just take care of all of those little belt buckles that he has on his feet uh, and all the other small metallic bits. At this stage the bottom half of the model is finished. I gave the white shin guards a coat of grey sear uh, just so I can start highlighting it up along with the rest and I am starting on the top of it. I'm using black templar, it's a great contrast paint to apply over this central primer to pick out his, uh, yeah, this dark leather jacket that he's wearing. I basically just go all around the model until uh, the, the contrast paint is uh, all neatly dry before we can continue. next part of the model we'll be painting is the flesh tone and I don't think Gillum and Flesh or any of the, of the other contrast paints leaves a particularly nice finish over a, a black and white uh, zenithal primer so I start off with applying a skin tone, in this case Vallejo heavy skin tone, over the face just so that Gillum and Flesh has something better to work with than the original primer. You can essentially use any of your preferred skin tones. I just like this one because it has a good covering power. Um, just one or two thin coats will do to get a nice base coat for your, uh, your, your contrast paints. The contrast paint is essentially what I apply in the next set, but I messed up some of the footage there, unfortunately. Uh, but you'll see that it really brings out the detail in the face quite well. And you get some very nice deep shading to work with, which is perfect for these Wild West miniatures, uh, if you ask me. Once those flesh tones are applied, I continue using the same snake bite leather that we used earlier in the video to go over all of the leather straps on the top of the torso. Uh, again, the reason why I didn't do this in the first step is because I wanted to finish the bottom half of the model first, so you have something that you can hold on to without being afraid to damage the rather frail contrast paints that I'm using in this process. As you apply all of the other paints, you're going to inevitably be hitting some of the parts that you want to stay, uh, that nice light grey from the primer. So I'm just touching up those parts with some uh, some very thin Othuan grey, 
which is the perfect color as the mid-tone for your whites. You never want to go all the way up to pure white except for the highlights. So some touch-ups with ultra and grey were in order at this stage. Some quick metallic details had to be applied. I'm again using the iron hand steel used earlier in this video to go and uh, do the bionic parts on this rider. Once those are done, I apply a thin down, dark tone wash all over the model. This is thinned in the pot with some matte medium to take away, away some of the shine uh, of the, the wash. And I, uh, well, I essentially use it all over the place. The thinning makes it uh, quite thin, so you get some nice, subtle, soft shading uh, on, on the armor panels. But it will creep into the recesses quite well, still leaving you with a, a plenty dark spot in the shading and it will accentuate the natural shading that the contrast paints and the zenithal primer already uh, already applied so this wash is the the miracle stuff to make bring all of it together After the uh, wash has dried, uh, it left a very lovely little soft shade all over the white armor panels. However, it does sometimes dry a bit blotchy and uh, spotty in places, and sometimes you just want to revitalize some of the white, well, the off white underneath it. So I'm going in with some thin down Ulthuan uh, white, Ulthuan grey here, to sort of revitalize that white a bit and to make it a smooth transition. I'm working with an incredibly thinned down version of Ultho and Grey, so this has the added advantage that if you get some of the white into the recesses, you can always just draw it out again with a soft, damp brush, just so you don't mess up your nice shading. The next step of painting all of the white armor panels is uh, the highlighting. I'm just using uh, Ceramite White, which is Games Workshop base paint um, that I thinned down quite a bit on my wet palette. And I just go over all of the edges of the armor panels with the tip of my uh, fine brush, uh, just so that it gets nicely accentuated and you can see the contours of these armor panels better on the finished uh, model. Highlighting is always a tricky stage, however it is incredibly rewarding when you do it across your miniature, it really brings it to life, so I highly recommend it if these are models that you enjoy uh, to go the extra step to, to highlight everything up. After I was done doing all the edge highlights with white, I uh, still used the white I had on my palette to sort of fill in all of the recesses that I wanted to have the orange glow afterwards. So these need a white undercoat to really, uh, to really pop, so I'm just doing that at this stage, getting them ready for that small amount of accent color. And if I was unhappy with the highlighting, I sort of touch it up again like I'm doing here to get a nice crisp edge on it. I also apply a few edge highlights using Vallejo Beige on the leather parts and straps, just to accentuate them a bit more. I don't go around the entire model doing these though, I keep it to the most prominent parts. And for the black parts, the parts I painted with Black Templar, I also just go around painting some of the more prominent edges on them to accentuate that um, moderate highlighting you already get with contrast paints. The final parts that needed to be painted were the orange parts, the orange fluo applied into the glowy bits, and with that your rider is essentially ready to be glued onto his iron horse. 
If you liked the video, be, make sure to uh, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to see more Wild West Exodus content in the near future, make sure to uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell for uh, future videos. I hope to see you then. Bye!